Hello everyone. Today we are going to look topic from the course algorithms from the very first unit introduction and topic for discussion is the properties of asymptotic notations. Let us uh, recollect what are all the asymptotic notations we have seen in last class. To represent the best case analysis of an algorithm we will use omega and to represent worst case we will use big O and for the average case we will be using theta notation. So um, let us discuss the important properties of transitivity, symmetry and reflexivity are the important properties of for your asymptotic notations. What do you mean by transitivity? In general we know what is transitivity. If A implies B and B implies uh, C, we, 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 we believe that A implies C, right? That is your transitivity property. So in this case, if we say that function f of n is said to be in order of g of n, then and g of n is said to be in order of h of n, then f of n is said to be in order of h of n. That is your transitivity. And this property holds for your, uh, not only for your big O, it also holds for your theta and omega notations. Now getting to your symmetry, if we say f of n is said to be in uh, theta of g of n, if and only if g of n is in theta of f of n, right? Reflexivity is nothing but um, if we say f of n is said to be in theta of f of n, it is hold for all the notations. In simple, a function is always bounded by itself. The key point is non-negativity. Your asymptotic notation deals with non-negative functions. Hello. We will see, to demonstrate your property, we will see an example where we explore transitivity property. If we believe, if we, it is given that f of n is n and g of n is n square and h of n is and function h of n is n cube and it is told that f of n is in order of g of n and g of n is in order of h of n you want to prove that f of n is in order of h of n mm. by definition of the big O we already know there should be two positive constants c and n naught right such that uh, if you want to prove f of n is in big O of g of n you want to prove f of n is less than or equal to c1 of g of n, right? And in the same way, if you want to prove that g of n is in order of h of n, you want to prove g of n is less than or equal to some constant c2 into h of n. And this is applicable for certain, after certain point where of n naught, right? That is, will be your starting point and we always believe this n naught will be, um, greater than or equal to your n. Now, my case is, I want to prove that f of n is less than or equal to h of n. So, here I replace the constant c is nothing but c1 into c2. In simple words, I can say that n is less than or equal to your n cube. So other important observations are if I can say that f of func uh, function f of n is equal to big O of function g of n implies that g of n is equal to big O of function f of n. And if there are two functions f of n and g of n then their addition is equal to theta of minimum of your function g of n and f of n and if f of n is equal to big O of g of n it implies that logarithmic of function f of n is equal to big O of logarithmic of function g of n where this function logarithmic of g of n should be greater than or equal to 1 and f of n should be greater than or equal to 1 for all large values of n. Then if f of n is equal to order of g of n, it implies that 2 to the power of f of n is equal to big O of 2 to the power of g of n. 
and function f of n is equal to big O of the function f of n the whole square. Right? Then f of n is equal to order of g of n implies that g of n is equal to omega of f of n function f of n and function f of n is equal to theta of function of n by 2 we know no, for the average case so these are all the other important observations other than your properties these are the materials referred for the preparation of the slides thank you